Is Didi possibly the best Asian American coming of age film ever? And should you go watch it when you have the chance? We're gonna talk about it. And you especially like the movie Didi because growing up, you were the Didi. Uh, we gotta Hambang. talk about it, Andrew. It says the film DD tackles Asian American teen angst at the peak of MySpace, AIM, and flip phones. And a lot of people are calling this the best coming of age Asian American movie ever. And by the way, there have been quite a few in this lane, both mainstream and indie. Oh, yes, on Rotten Tomatoes, audience and tomato scores uh, has very high scores right now, almost 100% uh, acing it, you know, like a Asian parent would love you to have uh also it had a limited theater release it is out in theaters right now but limited theaters so you guys go check it out i watched the movie and i got seven reasons why you might want to watch dd and trust me i'm not getting paid to say this i just think it's a pretty good movie real quick what do you give it out of 100 and what's it about all right so I watch it. my tomato score is i gotta give it at least like a, a 90 percent I think it's pretty high. It is definitely up there. Uh, maybe the best coming of age story, but we're going to talk about it because there's been some other ones, guys. Real quick, I just want to shout out to Better Luck Tomorrow, the debut. That was a Filipino one. Uh, Chain Can Dunk counts, Boogie counts, DD. These are coming of age for Asian American guys, particularly. Right, right, right. That main actor is Isaac Wang. He plays a uh, nerdy Asian kid wanting to become like a cool hip hop skater. Mahela Park, the director, Sean Wang. And actually, the legendary Joan Chen, still hot, by the way, plays oh, the mom. Joan Chen. Still looking good in the movie. Uh, Shirley Chen also is one of the actresses, plays the biggest sister. Uh, I guess she graduated from Harvard in real life, so. So, so. so long story short, what? It's a kid growing up in Fremont, California. His dad's in China. He's being raised by a single mom. He wants to be cool, but he's not cool. And he wants to participate in the mainstream American culture where he doesn't get any of the things that the other kids get, right? Because he doesn't, his mom's from China or Taiwan. Uh, essentially, I would say that that was not wrong. Uh, yeah, but yeah, basically he's a kid. He likes skating. He likes filming. It's loosely based on things from the director's life, Sean Wang. I don't think that it's exactly his life, obviously, but I think some of the stories are inspired by his life. All right, point number one, Andrew, you said it's the best of the similar style of coming of age movie. Yep. By the way, have you seen what? Andrew, Turning Red, The Farewell, Tiger Tail. I mean, we could just go down the list. There's a lot of coming of age Asian American films. Is yeah, there I think for a millennial Asian American guy, uh, particularly a Chinese American guy from the West Coast, but I think that this can, I'm going to talk about how it can relate to a lot of people, but particularly a Chinese American from the West Coast guy who's into, who's trying to be cool. But you know, some he's twists in it too, right? That make it unique. Because I heard that his mom is not a tiger mom in the movie. Yeah, so uh, it's more, there's aspects that are going to relate to you and aspects that won't. But essentially, I will say it's very well written. It's very funny. It shows very accurate depictions of uh, all the lifestyles of the early 2000s when you're on AIM and you got MySpace, you got flip phones, you know, YouTube is just starting up. Uh, JK Films is featured in there as one of the YouTubers that he watches. So I guess that it is so, it's so of that time. And I think that there's a lot of Asian American guys who are in their late 20s and 30s who are gonna heavily relate to this. Right, right, right. Point number two, um, it has some typical traits to it. Like they rated it R for cursing, but not much else. There's not a lot of sex or nudity in yeah, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, So I would say for an Asian American coming of film with like a kid on the front cover, you'd be like, oh, is this like some Disney stuff? Is this like PG-13 at most? No, it's R-rated because they just curse yeah. a lot. But other than that, there's not, I mean, there's a little bit of violence, uh, you know, some teenage, uh, not even sex. Smoking it's just, weed at you know, least, right? Yeah, there's some uh, weed and I some I will say use. this, man. I like that they made his mom a quasi-single mom because growing up when we were going to Chinese church, you did have kids that were doing like five hours of cello and piano and like straight Kumon, straight Harvard. But you also had kids whose parents were single moms. Like I'm yeah. saying, even at church, there's a range of experiences, but only the 10 out of 10 tiger mom gets depicted in media. Yeah, yeah. And I'm glad that she's not a tiger mom. You know, the mom, without giving too much away, you know, she's struggling on her own to raise these two kids because the father is in Taiwan making all the money. And who knows what type of life he's living out there. But over here, essentially in this movie, functionally, she's kind of like a single mother. But there's also another side to her because she's an artist too. So it's like you have an artistic mother who's trying to raise two kids who 
isn't the breadwinner, but the breadwinner's not present. So it, it does provide a lot of other, um, I would say, aspects that are maybe not super, super typical of a Taiwanese American family, but there's you, definitely, you, you, you know, saw it. it's real. It's you real. You know, a family that was like that. Point number three, you will resonate with some of the other aspects, like his relationship with his older sister being very contentious. Yeah. And I would say it's a pretty extreme uh, version of the contentious relationship with his sister, but it is very relatable. I had, I was there with another, I was there with a Taiwanese American friend who actually has an older sister, and he was like, whoa, like the aspects of that, the vibe between him and his sister, that was very relatable hey, to also me. Also, having a lot of Indian friends. Yes, because now here's the thing about the atypicalness of this movie is that it's not. Like, so Better Luck Tomorrow did take place in Orange County, which most of the, the cast was Asian, right? Because you know that that was an Asian summer. There was East Asian and some Southeast Asian in there. And then a lot of other films kind of depict Asians as a side character amongst non-Asians. But in this movie, because it's Fremont, California, heavily brown and heavily Asian still, and back yeah. then when they were growing up and to this day. Also, I want to say Hassan Minaj is from that area too. You know, so it's like, there's a lot of like, funny brown guys in it too yeah, like yeah, they, he, yeah. he got some cool like Sikh friends and like Hindu friends and he also has a Korean friend he has like a, or there's a Filipino kid somewhere in the mix you know what's interesting it's like and I'll, I'll pop up the photo of him with the Sikh friends here it's like I always noticed that growing up my Indian friends or the Sikh, Sikh people we knew growing up obviously in South Seattle there was a lot of Sikhs it's like they don't struggle as much with trying to feel cool even though people do treat them different yeah because they feel cool because of their religion and their identity yeah yeah, and you can see, like, it. I would say in a lot of these coming-of-age teenage films, there always is, like, a hip-hop-influenced nerdy Indian guy, which totally is a archetype, by the way. Oh, my goodness. In Mean Girls, there was that. I mean— If you went to just any sort of, like, decent college and above, yeah. you have an Indian homie who's— Essentially yeah. like a college-educated version of Nav. But Drake. I will tell you this. The interactions between the boys is funny, and it is very relatable. So point number four, I think it can actually appeal to non-Asians. I think it doesn't hold back. It doesn't feel like a too squeaky clean of an Asian film. You know, there is a lot of cursing. There's a lot of, like, young bro teenage talk. There's about, they talk about girls. There's a little bit mm. of violence. There's uh, some partying, obviously some slight drug use. So you're saying non-Asians won't be like, dude, I can't even watch. This is just yeah. like way too Asian. Yeah, and I think it depicted the non-Asians in the film as being, uh, you know, in the Bay Area, they're more open. It's not too racialized. There's obviously race is talked about. It. Him being Asian is part of it, but not the main crux of is it. Is the wolf pack and the cataracts in it? That's what I need to know. Blueberry yeah. Afghan. I, I think they play a... Uh, a, 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 a Keep the sneak or like no, some, they de they I think they they definitely play a couple Barry area songs. Uh, point number five, I think that this is a great movie to get us over the hill so that we can also move on to other topics. Like, I think that this coming of age story was actually done very well. It was very good, and that you know, I don't know of this exact type of character. I would want to watch ten more of these movies. I don't need right. to for my life. You're saying this is the coming of age. Story to end all coming of age stories. Well, I think for a particular type of kid, um, because I think that I have a feeling that like certain things of the childhood, like I don't need to watch a hundred of those coming of age movies to understand myself. I think that I'm at a point where I appreciate this movie, but I think there could be definitely space for another Asian guy coming of age story, but from a different perspective, like maybe more from a oh. Southeast Asian perspective. Bang, bang, did the, the gang gang. Bang, boy. bang, bang, did it, but that, that wasn't a big movie and, and uh, that was good though. But I would say like, yeah, definitely like in the coming years, I would like to see some like, Southeast Asian kid or like a younger Filipino kid or another Southeast, like a Vietnamese kid. I think there's a lot of stories to be had there. All right, point number six, Andrew, we have to support Asian indies, not just the Hollywood stuff. Uh, because even though a lot of the Hollywood people, we know them, we're friends with them, we came up with them, I'm happy for them. It seems like everything in Hollywood is got like five or 10 people of the same oh, people in it. Yeah, I love to see the new faces. And I think that these, the people in this movie are potentially the next generation of a lot of the Asian actors in Hollywood. You know, um, I think they're very hopeful. Uh, and then point number seven, guys, obviously it's the Fung Bros channel. We're always talking about media depictions of Asian males. And in this movie, we're very, you know, it can get very picky if you want it to be. And I would say, honestly, I thought the depiction of being a young 
Chinese American teen was fair. I thought hey, it was realistic. He had the flat. He had the flat bowl cut. Yeah, he had the bowl cut. Um, he's trying to be cool. He likes to skate. Uh, he doesn't really get clowned on for being Asian too much. And obviously, depending on where you grew up in the United States, you got made fun of more. But I like how people did point out his race, but it wasn't the main thing about the story. You know, like they have some Asian nicknames, of course, but that's essentially it. So I feel I, like... I also, I think in the Bay Area, because there is such a variance, you could be like, quote unquote, a nerdy Silicon Valley Taiwanese, or you could be like a B-boy DJ Filipino Mm. They, 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 they don't just go off race. They go off race and how you act and your personality and your culture. Yeah, and I think that basically for a lot of people, they want their A24 film. I'm not saying this was produced by A24, but it, it kind of could have been. they want their Donald Glover, Atlanta, yeah. high-end take on their community. Yeah, you know, whatever the farewell did for certain Asian girls, like... I think that this movie does for Asian guys, for sure. All right, let's get into the comments section. Somebody said, hopefully it's better than Chan Can Dunk. I never got pissed off with the Asian American based movie since The Farewell. That movie made me mad. Mm. Um, I thought Chan Can Dunk, it's not really good, but there was some moments that I liked. But yeah, I would say that this, from what I'm, you're telling me and other people are saying, this movie doesn't have a lot of cringy moments. Yeah, I mean, I would say this movie actually has a lot of uh, authentically awkward moments that kind of make you go squirm in your seat a little bit if you relate to it, be like, oh, I know what that feels like. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But uh, no, it was honestly not a cringy film. Obviously, Chang Ken Dunk, it was coming from the super Disney side. They kind of made it like this fantastical, like uh, Luck of the Irish or like high school musical type movie. It was like mixed with like Air Bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll I, say this. The next section of comments said, Dude, this might be an unpopular take. I am so sick of sad, overly emo Asian American stories. <laughs> I, all right, all right. Somebody, I think it was a friend of a friend who was a female who watched DD and said she cried. And then I was going into it. I was like, okay, how sad is this movie? Does the grandma die at the end? Spoiler alert, it's not that sad. It's not that sad. It's not a sad movie. I don't think it's a sad movie. I'm the Asian guy. You know, if you're an Asian guy that relates to that. But, but, but maybe some of the trailers were, you know what I mean, different trailers, some seem the more The part that could make you cry more... is some of his relationships, I think, with his sister. If you're an older sister and you felt like you had this type of relationship with your younger brother, I could see it making you cry. Right. You're saying cry not because of the intensity, but the intenseness of the relatability and the depth of the sure, relatability. Sure. Um, somebody said, are you guys ever going to speak on unspoken or what? Yo, we just found out, Andrew... Our friend Ray Huang DP'd this movie. Yeah. Basically, he shot this movie. It's about an, uh, a mainland Chinese dad. His daughter's an international student, gets murdered in the States, and he comes back and goes on a rampage on everybody. Yeah, I can't wait until this movie comes out. Guys, we talked about it in a past video. We even showed a part of the trailer. We're talking about this movie, but I think it's make. I heard it's making the circles around the, the festival circuit right now. All right, listen, listen, here's the truth. You could argue that unspoken is more of the theme that Asian America needs to address its actual problems more than another coming of age story. But in terms of just the mechanics and the profitability and the marketing demographic pools, it's hard to get these unspoken style movies. I, I'm going to promote it, though. But it's hard to get them to get traction. You know oh, what I'm saying? We'll anyway. do a review when we watch Unspoken for sure. Um, somebody said, man, the artsiness really just relates to me. The other coming of age stories, they were good in macro, but the micro execution didn't relate to me. This feels like hipster enough. Mm, I agree. Um, somebody said, we got to talk about the othering experience. A lot of us didn't grow up with extreme hate rate of, hatred from the world calling us the C word, but a lot of Asian Americans just felt super othered. Mm. Like, uh, like we were aliens, but here's the thing, Andrew. Is it our culture that is super alien or are people seeing us as alien or a combination? Right. Um, other people just, people are saying that it wasn't based around race. It was more based around culture because the Bay Area has always had some super cool Asians depending on how they acted, right? Um, this one guy did say, Andrew, he doesn't like how it seems, and he's saying this, is this theme of this movie just going to be like fully assimilate to the American MTV BET mainstream and then you'll be accepted? You know what I'm saying? You know, some of the old school Asians, they hate that. But it's like, 
Also, it is logical, too, that you have to understand MTV and BET, all these influences that shape your generation. Obviously, the Asian kids, we may not have been allowed, especially if you have traditional Asian parents, Chinese parents. You can't. You're not allowed to watch MTV or BET. So then how can you relate to the kids at school? Um, no, I wouldn't say this movie does that. I don't think it promotes full assimilation. I mean, not any more assimilation than him at the beginning of the movie to be honest. So it's not about that. I will tell you that. I don't think this movie really promotes that. It's not like, Oh, get your hair done like this and then start hanging out with the white guys. Like it's not, yeah, I don't know. No. Right. Smoke weed and get bad grades yeah. and then you'll get the girl of your dreams. Yeah. No. And I'll tell you this. I thought the ending was fine. I think some people have some debate about the ending of the movie. I have some debate on how it could have been executed, but honestly, I'm okay with the ending. I like it. Uh, and that's all I'm going to say. This, I don't want to spoil it for you. This last comment said, dude, I don't know if this video movie makes sense because in 2008, all the YouTube creators were popping. So this guy should have had more confidence. Okay. There is some YouTube creators depicted in there. If it takes place in 2008, maybe not all the kids were super on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what are we arguing about a matter of years? Yeah. 2004. Uh, and not only that, I'll say this people's micro fishbowl that is made up of 30 to 50 people can be very different than what is like happening on a macro level. Too. I will say this Asian YouTube really, really exploded 2013 in 20. No, it started really exploding in 2010. So 2008 is still it's potentially still early enough. No, no, where it's like, still at the time where like there's, it's possible your non-Asian friends didn't even watch one person on YouTube. Nowadays, yes. it's almost impossible because Asians review everything and they're some of the best product analysts. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, I'll say this, man. I think that this is like when the, the light bulb has the filament and the, the light bulb's about to burn out. And then the, you know how the light bulb burns really bright right before it goes out. This is almost like the filament of this like coming of age, like Asians don't fit into the Western Anglosphere world movie. Like this is the brightest one, Andrew, but potentially do you think it's one of the last ones? You know what I'm saying? Because we had a string of these movies. How many more are you going to make? Yeah. Well, you guys let us know in the comments down below. Uh, if you're going to watch the movie, what's a, what's another, like, are you into this coming of age idea? I thought this movie was well executed and it's funny and there's plenty of cursing. It's very relatable because yes, kids curse. Surprise, surprise. I, I will say this though, Andrew. Do you think that these quote unquote sad emo movies, this is just what Asians like? Because Asians like sad boy EDM, they like Keshi, and they like to wear essentials hoodies with ultra boosts or whatever. And I'm saying that those are kind of sad boy outfits. Yes. So I'm saying that it's like. Yes. Yes. They, yeah, that's why Asians will like this movie. It is artsy and kind of sad and edgy enough and cool enough for the Asians to appreciate. All right, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.